this week on Engage the Sage. Hi everyone, I'm Don Saucer. Welcome to this week's episode of Engage the Sage. This week, I'm going to talk to you about how I've seen higher education change since the COVID-19 pandemic. When I say higher education, I'm talking about how it is that we as instructors and how our students are in our college classrooms. Now, the pandemic has changed a lot more than teaching, and I do want to acknowledge that. But I'm going to focus my video today on talking about things that I've seen, things that I've heard my colleagues tell me, things that my students have told me about how it is that they've seen classroom experiences change since COVID-19. Some of these changes have been great. Some of these changes may be less great. So I'm going to talk about both the cons and the pros that I've seen emerge in college teaching since COVID-19. The first con that I see, that my colleagues see, that my students even report, is that students appear less engaged in the classroom now than they were before the pandemic. There are several reasons for this, and one of the first of these is, I think, technological distractions. Our students have access to tech all the time. We also have access to tech all the time. Literally, at their fingertips, they have unlimited access to social media, web resources, and lots of lots of things that are competing for their attention in our classes. I know that a lot of my students and a lot of my colleagues, and sometimes even me, try to do more than one thing when they're in a class, in a Zoom meeting, or those kinds of things, because they think that they can multitask. They think that they can both teach or learn while they're attending to the class, to the meeting, or what have you. The issue is, is that multitasking isn't really a thing. It is not really possible for us to pay attention to learning at the same time that we're doing something like sending texts or emails. There's also the possibility, and I know that I definitely experienced this during the pandemic, that we may actually experience screen fatigue or attention fatigue as we're doing all of these kinds of things. So during the pandemic, I know that I had Zoom meetings back to back. They no longer had the, the travel time uh, sort of distraction. And I know that I was looking at screens all day to the extent that I was getting headaches and my eyes were actually getting tired for doing that. So there were a lot of things that were creating distraction and fatigue that could have affected my engagement and definitely my students' engagement. Our students are also distracted by the fact that they're having to learn and adjust to new learning environments. When the pandemic happened, a lot of students had to adjust, and we had to adjust, to moving from in-person instruction to remote or online instruction. Now, as we're starting to come out of the pandemic, we've retained some of those online instructional modalities, but we've also had to return to some of that in-person instruction. And what happens is some of our students, depending on where they went to school and the experiences they've had, might not be ready for in-person instruction the way that we might hope them to be. And this could definitely create some lack of their engagement. And of course, and a point I want to reiterate, there is a lot going on. There are so many personal and professional challenges. There are so many ways that it can get to us inside that oasis of our classroom, you know, that getting watch alerts or, or, or phone alerts or computer alerts for those texts and those messages. It is really, really hard to invest in that oasis, to invest in that teaching and learning because our world is moving so fast. There are so many things going on and they can get to us in class. And that is creating some disengagement. I want to be clear. When I'm talking about our students being disengaged, I am not saying that they are lazy, that they are unmotivated, or that they don't want to work hard. I'm saying we have a situational context since the pandemic that is promoting disengagement in a way that it used to not do that. So I am not blaming, I am reporting. The second change that I've seen in higher education that, that I've seen, that my students are telling me about, that my colleagues are telling me, is that our students are expecting more from us as instructors since the pandemic. I will remind you, and you can definitely check this out in our previous videos, that I am an advocate for what I call the empathetic course design perspective. I think we should be empathetic to our students. I think we should understand our classes are not the only things going on in their lives. And I think that we should provide reasonable accommodation for their personal and professional challenges to support their learning and success. Having said that, I've experienced, my colleagues have experienced, my students have experienced that some of the accommodations that we thought were reasonable during the pandemic are things that might now not be as reasonable. And what happens is students might expect that same degree of accommodation and flexibility that they experienced during the pandemic when now some of us are trying to return to more of what we had done prior to the pandemic. 
Some examples, some specific examples, are students might expect more flexible deadlines. Students might expect more access to materials outside of class. Students might expect not to have to come to class in real time, but to have those, those classes recorded and watched later asynchronously. These are things that students might ask for that instructors are becoming less willing to provide as we come out of the pandemic. What this might do to us as instructors is might put us into kind of a tenuous situation where we're trying to be empathetic, we're trying to be accommodating, but we're still trying to make sure that the content and the skills that we're supposed to be teaching are successfully learned by our students at a realistic timeline. So restoring some accountability is something that a lot of instructors are telling me they're having a difficult time doing. I think we sometimes have a misunderstanding of what academic rigor is. Academic rigor, as I've said before, is not arbitrary difficulty. It is challenge with support. I've heard from a lot of my colleagues that are having a hard time finding that balance between challenge and support. The third change kind of on the negative side is that I have seen, my students are reporting and my colleagues are reporting, that our students are coming to college with differing knowledge bases than they had before the pandemic. Some of this knowledge is they're coming in with, with different content and different information. Some of this is our students may not be as well versed in the soft skills that might cause them to learn and succeed better in discussion-based classes and other college classes. I know, for instance, I've had students tell me that they're not used to regulating their facial expressions because they had masks covering them up for a while in their classes, so they're not used to providing that kind of nonverbal validation to the people teaching their classes. And I know for sure I've seen a number of students with kind of blanker expressions on their faces and not as many people smiling and nodding since the pandemic. So those are some of the cons, some of the negative things that I've seen happen in higher education, my colleagues reporting, my students are reporting since the pandemic, but there's also been some good things, and I think it's important that we acknowledge those as well. The first good thing that I want to kind of talk about kind of post-pandemic is that our students, at least in my experience, are sharing a lot more with us than they used to. I have seen kind of a renewed and in some cases new emphasis on the well-being of our students in higher education. We are starting to realize, and I've said this before, right? good teachers teach content, but great teachers teach people. There seems to be a lot more recognition that supporting our students in all the ways, their physical, their psychological, their mental well-being, in all those ways is going to help them more successfully learn and succeed in our classes as well as beyond our classes. And it's been really heartening to see that renewed or even new emphasis on well-being. I have seen more sharing with and accommodation to and recognition of all of those other personal and professional challenges and responsibilities that our students are facing, but also that we are facing. And I think things like using mental health days or having a little bit more flexible deadlines when appropriate, these are things that I think are a big plus in the evolution of higher education. I think we have become more empathetic in understanding that when a student presents maybe differently uh, than we would recommend, maybe they're, they're doing late work, maybe they're not coming to class as often, I think a lot of us are starting to acknowledge that we don't know why that is the case. It may have been the case before the pandemic, we would attribute that to the student not caring or the student being lazy or something like that. I think now we are much more likely to think about what challenge is that student facing that could be contributing to that behavior. And I think that is a positive change. I've also seen that this sharing has led a lot of instructors to be more proactive in the support than reactive to support. So being empathetic in course policies, I think is something that I've also seen in the evolution of higher education since the pandemic. The second big kind of good thing I've seen since the pandemic is that we our instructors are now better able to teach in multiple modalities. When the pandemic came, I had never taught online. I had never done remote instruction. And I went from in about a 10 day span from never having done any of that to teaching people how to teach over Zoom. And I think we've started to understand that there are other ways to share content than just saying it in front of a live audience. And that is awesome. Our ability to provide asynchronous resources, our ability to create video content, the ways that we can actually create community among our students, even outside of class over these online mediums, is something that is a huge advantage now that many of us, myself included, did not possess as part of our skill sets before the pandemic. With the advantage of these new skills, our world has gotten smaller. Our reach to students who are not in our physical space has gotten greater. And I think these are awesome advantages that we can now enjoy since the pandemic. The third advantage that I've kind of seen in higher education since the pandemic 
is we have now demonstrated resilience as instructors. We have shown grit. When the pandemic came, we couldn't decide just not to do the adjustments. We couldn't decide just not to teach in these modalities. It was hard, but we did it. I have seen my colleagues demonstrate so much resourcefulness. I've seen them demonstrate innovation. I've seen them lean into things previously would have been unheard of for those individuals. And they did it, they didn't necessarily enjoy it, but now they're experiencing the benefits of having done that. And just the self-efficacy that goes into knowing that you can handle a challenge in that magnitude, I think has really helped us as a teaching force. We displayed unprecedented creativity. We displayed unprecedented resilience. And I want us to celebrate that. So as we look at what we've done coming out of the pandemic, I do want us to acknowledge all the good things that have happened in terms of our ability to deliver the highest quality education that we can and to truly, in ways that we had never thought of before, support our students' learning and success. I will tell you, I wish we did not experience the COVID-19 pandemic. The, the, the mental toll, the, the loss of human life, the, the anxiety it produced, the crises, this is not something that I would ever want to live through nor have anyone else experience. But because we did, I want to acknowledge both the things that made higher education a little bit harder and the things that made higher education a little bit better. Because I think acknowledging that having been through a crisis like that, we had the opportunity to make ourselves better, that is amazing to me. In the comments below, I would love to hear your observations and experiences with how coming out of the COVID-19 pandemic have changed teaching for you and your students in both good and bad ways. And for those bad ways, I would love to hear what you're doing to get beyond them and any recommendations you have for turning those bad things into good things. Thank you for watching this episode of Engage the Sage. Please like, subscribe, sign up for notifications, share us on social media, and we'll see you next time on Engage the Sage.